everyone. Welcome back to Wonderland Performing Arts out of Lafayette, Louisiana, and welcome back to session five of Wondercrafts with me, Miss Emmeline. Last week, we did a project uh, where we used paper and we made paper chains so that we could decorate our rooms and hang up some photos or some pictures that we really liked. This week, we're going to be using yarn, and I showed you a lot of the yarn in that last video thinking we could get through two projects, but time goes so fast. Um, so I'm going to show you the supplies again now, and we're going to relearn the slip knot, and we're going to be making finger crochet and finger knitting. With these um, items that we make, they could be chains that could also be hung up in your room, or they could decorate your house in whatever way you wanted you know, around the windows or around your door. Um, you can also make them shorter and make necklaces or a headband or a bracelet or an anklet, anything like that. I'm going to show you how to do finger crochet with one string and then two at a time. Then I'm going to show you how to do finger knitting, which uses all of your fingers with one piece of yarn and then two at a time. And when we use multiple yarns, it gives us a different look. It uh, creates more weight to the project, so it just depends on what you want to use them for. Um, when you come up with what you want to use them for, then you know, do I want to use one yarn or two? Do I want to do finger crochet or finger knitting? And this can lead into so many possibilities. It can lead into learning how to knit, which I could teach you that too. Um, and it could also uh, lead into more sculptural projects or other you know, fiber arts project. So I hope you like it and I'll meet you at the art table. All right, Wonder Crafters, let's talk supplies real quick. It was a part of last week's video, but we're going to begin again. You can use string. It doesn't have to be yarn. If string is all you have, that's okay. You can use thread. This is probably for a kite. Um, it's much smaller, but that's okay. You can use yarn. If anybody in your household has some yarn, this is cotton. I also have some yarn that's a little bit uh, bulkier. It'll give a different technique. We have another ball of string, if that's all you have. Some people are gardening right now, and so that's what they're working with the most, really. This is red wool and another ball of cotton. All of these will work. They'll give different things once the finished product is done it'll look different depending on what I'm working with and what you're working with but it is okay to have a variety of things the last thing you're gonna need is scissors and it's not the last last because really what we're working with today is our hands okay so that's what we're gonna use today all right Using the red yarn on the white background, we will get enough contrast to work on our slip knot. The slip knot is step one for both of these projects. Starting with this technique, we make a lowercase n. This is considered the tail. This is considered the yarn. I'm calling it the yarn because it's connected to the ball of yarn. With the tail, pick it up. I'm going to slide it a little pick it up and put it over the yarn. And now it looks like a little fish. In this instance, the tail is too short. It'll cause a headache when we want to make our slip knot. So let's do that one more time where we make the fish with a longer tail. Starting with a larger lowercase n. Pick up the tail put it over the yarn. We see the fish again. Let's make the fish a little bit smaller, the tail a little bit longer. Next step, we pick up the body of the fish. We're gonna plop it down on top of the yarn. Noticing the tail is on top, pick up the body of the fish, plop it down. Now we have what looks like a pretzel. This is a technique that I came up with, Miss Emmeline. This pretzel shape shows us the tail goes under the loop and the yarn goes under that new piece that we use to create the pretzel, pretzel. This is the body or what we call the yarn. This is the tail and that's the tail. We want to pick up the yarn piece that's connected to the ball. 
holding the tail and pulling it tight. Notice how there's a knot on one side and a straight piece of yarn on the other. With this new loop, we pull it. The tighter we pull it, the knot will tighten. Okay? Why is it called a slip knot? Because if you pull this side that didn't have the knot on it, it will make this loop slip smaller, smaller, smaller until it disappears like magic. We have no knot anymore. One more time. You can rewind the video if you need in order to really learn how to make the slip knot. We pick up the tail, we put it over the yarn, we pick up the body of the fish and put it down, making a pretzel. We pick up the inside of the pretzel, hold on to the tail, and pull it tight. Okay? For those of you who already are familiar with slip knots, there are many ways to do it. I'm going to make this knot disappear. So if you feel more comfortable holding it up into your hands, let's try that way. When you get fast, you might want to do it the faster way, which is wrapping it around your fingers, Take the tail up and over. It's crossing. Now I'm going to pull the tail through, but not all the way through. The key is through, but not all the way through. If I pulled it all the way through, and then I pull this, it's just a regular square knot. See? That's not a slip knot. That's not the knot you want. One more time. Pull it around, up and over. Pull it through, but not all the way through. So that you have a square knot on one side and then just the straight yarn on the other. Pulling it tight. We can test it. Do we have a slip knot? Yes, it's slipping. Last time around your fingers. One finger works okay too. Up and over. Pull it halfway, not all the way, creating that slip knot. Great job. Okay, now what do we do with the slip knot? How do we create something that becomes something fun like a necklace or a bracelet or a chain? If you are right handed, you're going to use your right hand the most. So you'll want to put the finger the left hand first finger. Okay? Get the tail out of the way. We're not wrapping with the tail. If you are left handed, you want to use your left hand the most, so you put the loop on your right hand. Okay. Using the ball of yarn, there he is, we're going to go up and over, and I'm using my hand to hold both the tail and the yarn. So now I have two pieces of yarn over my first finger. Taking the old one or the original one, which is the slip knot, picking it up, we're going to take it off of our hand, but we don't lose our new loop. Once again, not the little tail. You can pull it tight, but that's not the yarn we're going to use. We want to use the one that's connected to the ball of yarn, picking it up and over. The original goes off. The new stays on. Slide it down your finger. Up and over. The original goes off. The new stays on. The minute the yarn goes up and over, the new loop is now the old loop. Take the old loop off. Now the yarn becomes the new loop. You can pause and rewind at any time if this is confusing to you. Now we see the chain growing down. Here's the chain. Okay. This is a way to learn how to use your hands without um, it being too complicated. 
this is kind of like the most basic grab some string um, let's get started type project but it can become a decoration piece it can become a headband you can make three of them and braid them you can hang them from your rear view mirror of your car with like a little um, reminder on it or uh, anything really it becomes something stronger than just a piece of yarn because now it's a chain and some kids that I teach actually want to do the whole thing and make this into a chain this whole thing and then we've even measured them so if you want to strike up a contest with one of your friends both of you get a ball of yarn crochet the whole thing as fast as you can walk it across the yard and measure it and see whose is the longest so I'm gonna do a couple more I would probably consider this a bracelet if it's short so I'm gonna do a couple more notice I'm still going up and over taking the old off and I'm holding it in my hand so that it stays out of the way I don't want this to be pulled anywhere so my other thumb and fingers are helping okay up and over and off it's okay if you go this way or this way you'll find it's gonna be easier for you you'll naturally want to do it one way or the other your next question might be what if I go back and forth it doesn't make it look that much different when you go back and forth so this is back and this is front but what might end up happening is that one way could pull this loop up and you don't want that to happen you want to be looking only at fresh yarn so see which is better for you see how this is the loop below you don't want to pull the loop below up you want to keep it out of the way working just with the yarn great okay now if you just pull this off of your hand we have our chain but the last loop is live meaning nothing is connected to it so if I just took this off my hand the way it was it would all come unraveled and we don't want that we put work into it we want to enjoy it so in order for it to not become unraveled we have to tie this loop off you don't cut it and tie it there's actually a really cool trick so I'm going to demonstrate it not being tied off pulling it and oh we lost it now where is it you have to go find it and it'll go all the way to the very end and it'll be it won't disappear it'll just be back like yarn so how do we tie it off you can put it down get your scissors cut a pretty good length for the tail take the yarn put it through see how I put it through that last loop pull it tight there we go now we have a really cool chain that could become a bracelet friendship bracelet you can mail one to a friend of yours and wear it all summer it could be an anklet and you've got these threads to tie with okay um, once you tie your knot you can cut the ends so that they're not super long you'll have a little bow but what I don't advise is cutting right up against the knot because it will come undone and then unravel so either cut it here and weave it back through to make the end hide away or keep it where it is for tying around something here's just something is sitting here I'll grab it say you have a little plant and you're like well that would look pretty cool or say it's a um, toy a teddy bear pretend if this was a teddy bear you want to give him a little tie you could do this but the cool thing is is the chain is there 
going around. It just makes it a little bit more festive, makes it a little bit more fun. Looks like a scarf if this was Santa Claus or something. Okay, so I'm going to put this aside and we're going to do our next step where we do two together. It creates something that looks different. Okay, say you only have the string. Nobody in your, in your household knits so you don't have yarn. You could go order some online. You could um, have some friend bring some to you. And um, if this is a fun project for you, you probably do want to get some yarn in your life. Using two strings, we're going to just pretend these are like one string. Meaning we're going to put them right up against each other. This is a white top, so you you have to kind of double check and see that there's two. Um, but when they're right up against each other like this, when you do your slip knot, pretend they're one piece of yarn. I'm going to do over the finger slip knot, crossing it over, pulling it under. Okay. I'm right-handed, so I'm putting it on my left hand. Make sure the tail is out of the way. Use just the yarn part. Actually, since I'm right-handed, I'll probably put them on the right, up and over. Now that's old, take it off. Another tip I'm going to give you is when you slide the yarn off, if your finger's like super straight, and you're like, I can't get it, it's all too tight, it's too tight. Curve your finger down a little bit. See how this one already wants to jump off? When you curve your finger down, that one's a lot easier. You just pull it right up and over. Here we go, once again. Up and over. Now, see, I'm wrestling with it. If it's too tight, it will not work. Curve your finger down. Okay, I'm going a little bit faster on this one because I want to get to the four finger knitting. But at any time, you can stop the video because this is the same as the one strand. I'm pretending they're just connected, but look, it makes kind of a candy cane look. It makes it just more interesting to look at. All right. I challenge you to make three with two colors and braid them together and then you'd have all those colors working together and um, six colors in a braid. Okay, a couple more times up and over, curve the finger down, slide it back. Now I'm going back the other way, it does not matter. Okay. Slide it off your finger. There's the chain. So if you went long enough and you turned this into a necklace, you could slide a bead on and put it in the middle. Um, I'm going to do one later that will be more like a headband, but I will do that and just show it to you so that you don't have to make it if you don't want to, but you can see what it looks like and if you like it, you can make it cutting both strings, pulling it through the last loop because you don't want to lose your work, and pull it tight. <coughs> All right, we have our single crochet, finger crochet chain. We have our crochet chain with two strings. Now it's time to learn how to finger knit. We start with, guess what? A slip knot. Okay? Around, up and over, and through. You're a pro at this now, right? I would imagine so. Okay, from here. We want the palm of our hand to be looking at us, not down. And 
we want to use our um, less dominant hand for holding and our more dominant hand for weaving. There are um, three techniques I can think of for finger knitting. I'm just going to start with one. If we have enough time, we'll go through the others. Or, guess what? If you really like it, you can message me and I will teach you the other ones if we don't get them finished today. Okay, so with our hand facing us, the palm of our hand facing us, I am right-handed, so I want my left hand to be facing me. I put the yarn on my first finger and I hold the tail in the palm of my hand out of the way. The slip knot is considered over. Okay, here's where the weaving comes in. Over and under and over and under and over and under. So this is considered over. Under, over, under. And then we have to repeat. Over, we're coming back again. Under, over, and under. Repeat until we have two pieces of yarn on every finger. Right now, we've woven it twice, but we only have one on each. We want two on each, so we keep going in the same direction we were going. Over, under, over, and under. But look, we still only have one. Keep going. This is the fourth time of weaving. Over, under, and over. Where do we stop? We stop when we have two strings on each finger. And in this case, it's between our first finger and our middle finger. That's where we stop. Now, just like with the finger crochet, we take the original row, which is the row below, and we take it up and off our finger. We can also curve our finger just like we did before in order to help that yarn come up and off. We can curve it just slightly, reaching down, reaching down. See the one below is going up and off. This is the one that has the tail, so now we take that to the back. Slide them all down and begin our weaving again. We finished right here, remember? So we wanna go in that same direction. Here's the yarn, it's the clue to help you. So we're gonna continue in the same direction, going around the first finger. So that's over, under, over, under. Keep going until there are two strings on each finger. Over, under, over. There's our two strings. Take the one below, up and off, up and off, third finger, fourth finger, scoot them down a little. Don't scoot them down past your knuckles because you're going to be taking them off in a second. It will just create more work, but just scoot them down a little so that there's room enough to put your next row. It's in the same position, right? Right here between these two fingers, we're going to continue. We're going to go under, <coughs> excuse me, over, under, over, under, over, under, and over, and stop. Take the old one up and off, up and off, up and off. So the first setup row, you need to weave it four times. But after that, you just weave it one more time so that there are, I mean, two directions, but one full time so that there's a piece of string on each finger. Pretty cool. Now if I turn my hand around, you'll see the chain growing out of the back of my hand. Looks a little bit messy now but eventually it's gonna pull down and make more of a connected tube, which is great for headbands or for decorating your room. So we look a little bit like Spider-Man now with a web coming out of the back of our hand, but pretty soon it's gonna look like a chain. Don't give up in this moment. It might feel messy, 
but you want to get past this moment so that you can see the chain. Once the chain starts developing, it's going to get longer and longer and longer and you're going to be like, wow, this is so cool. But if you give up in this moment, this is really the hardest four rows. Okay, if you can get through the hardest four rows, you can do it forever and ever. Okay, tug the chain behind. Scooting it down a little. Let's continue. Here we go. And I've taught a lot of, so I'm pulling it down. I've taught a lot of kids. The more comfortable you get, the faster you can go. Some of you, I'm sure, are going to be going so fast. Tug. Wrap. Once you get it all set up, it's just repeating. Repeat, repeat, repeat. That's why it's a calming activity. It gets you in the zone. You're creating something. And you don't really have to think about it anymore. You're just repeating it. And so it becomes calming. Okay. I'm going to do two more and then show you how to cast off. Do them with me. Last one. And you want your fingers to kind of stay close. As you're weaving, if they spread out, that's okay. But if you keep them consistent, your tension will be consistent. So right here, this is a little bit loose. If it becomes too loose, it'll fall off your fingers. Tug. And up and over. Now, you have all the time in the world to finish this chain and make it really long. Look how cool that is. But I want to move on to making a chain with two strings at the same time to show you how to do that so that you can work on new and other ideas. Okay? This I would probably make eight feet long so that I could wrap it around some things as decoration. Longer the better, right? Get you some yarn and get going. Make it really, really long and show me how long you get it. But for now, here's the cast off moment, okay? The yarn that you use is the one that's farthest away from the, the, um, the loop that you use, sorry. You don't want to use your live yarn loop. You want to use the one that's farthest away. Take it off the pinky. Where do you think it goes now? Old, up and off, right? Original, up and off. Okay, next, here we go, up and off, and up and off, all right, then, yet again, what do we do? We want to save this loop by cutting it pulling it through, pulling it tight, nice, let's have a look, so this chain could be a banner in your room, could be hung up along your porch railing, you could hang this up around the porch railing and then put little hearts on it to remind everybody that you're thinking of them. And we left the ends long enough that we can tie them down with the ends, okay? This could also be a headband. Put a flower in it if you've got one from the garden or from the store, and it could be a pretty cool headband. Okay, putting this to the side, 
Let's finish our lesson today with finger knitting using two colors. The second color I'm going to use is the chunkier, bulkier pink. And it's one strand of yarn, meaning it's not twisted with anything else. It's fuzzy. One strand, not twisted. As opposed to this, which is actually two strands twisted together. That's getting us way far into yarn talk. And maybe that's not um, something you're interested in today, but you could be eventually. So... There are two strands twisted together for this. If I untwist, I can pull them apart. There they are. Okay. And this one is just one strand, nice and fuzzy. For every yarn you use, you get a different look. That's why there are so many yarns to choose from. But it is also why I chose these two because I want to create a new look. Okay, putting the yard side by side. What do we start with? Yes, a slip knot. Remember that technique? Do it the old way, the way I developed. Back down to the pretzel. Pick up the side and pull it. Okay, I'm right handed, so my slip knot is going to go on my left hand, first finger, palm side facing, and here we go, tail holding down, what's this one, over, your right, under, over, under. Bringing these to the right hand side, it's easier to work with. Over and under. This one's gonna be a lot faster because you guys already know how to do it, right? I just did four rows of weaving to get two strands on each finger. Okay, up and over. There we go, and off. First row done. Get the tail to the back out of the way. This is our spider web moment. It's right here waiting. This is where the yarn is. Over, under, over, under. Over, under, and over. Which one do I take off? This one? Well, if I did, I would have nothing to link it on to because I just wove it. So this one is the one I want to take it off, take off because I want it to link and hook onto that one. By hooking, it goes like this and it's hooked to that yarn. All right, next one. Do this with me and if it gets confusing, just pause the video and begin again. Remember how it's Difficult up to about row four, so don't give up. Row three. Tug it down. Row four. Old up and over, up and over. See how I'm curling my fingers? Okay, check out the Spider-Man moment. Nice. But this time, the yarn is much more close together and it's creating something heavier, more dense. Um, it curls in just like we want it to in a nice way. Okay. Let's do a couple more and you'll be able to see this a lot easier. Do this with me. Over, under, over, under, 
over and stop. All right, see how it's coming along? Okay, I'm gonna pause the video here and make it a lot longer and show you what it looks like if it goes a long way. Join me to see what it looks like. Okay, so I've worked a lot longer, my chain is a lot longer, and I would probably go for a while. If I wanted to turn this into a scarf, I would probably make it six feet long. But for now, I have a nice, heavy, um, cool piece of chain here where the front and the back is um, connected. It looks continuous, it's soft. Um, and I'm going to show you one last time how to cast off. With the front of our hand facing us, we see where the yarn is. It's over here. We start with the loop that's farthest away from the yarn so that the yarn itself will tie around the loop. and make it so we don't lose our work. Starting with the pinky, pick it up, put it over your ring finger, your third finger, taking the one below, curve your finger, and release it up and over. Next finger, put it on your middle finger, taking the yarn from below, up and over, and release it. Last time, up and over our pointer finger, through the loop, find the yarn, Cut the yarn, just like with the other chain, and pull it through your very last loop. Ta-da! You must feel pretty proud right now having created four projects in one day. We have our uh, four finger knitting with two yarns, nice and chunky. We have four finger knitting with one yarn. Yours is going to look different because your fingers are different sizes than mine. We have finger crochet with two yarns, creating a nice bracelet. And we have finger crochet with one yarn, a nice chain. Okay? So, thank you for joining me for Wonder Crafts at Wonderland Performing Arts. This is Miss Emily in Session 5 signing off and see you next week. Have fun!